Well, uh, we have spent a lot, of, <coughs> uh, probably almost one hour, I think, uh, in talking about making queries of in, um, by using SQL. So, um, yeah, so it is very powerful to do the querying data in SQL. However, it is also possible and also uh, recommended to modify the table, modify the data by using SQL. So as I mentioned in on the in the first video that we can create tables, we can create databases, we can create indexes, we can create users, etc. Uh, but in most cases, we just modify the records within a table. Okay. Uh, so one thing that keep in mind is that when you're modifying table in SQL, you have to be very, very, very careful. So because when you did something uh, in SQL, so see if you deleted some records in SQL, then you come, you cannot go back. So there is no undo button. Okay, so there's no undo button in SQL. So once you make some change and if you commit that change and that change will stay there okay so unless you have some backups of your database for example if you have database you back up on, on different time periods so t1 and also you back up on t2 and also you back up on t3 okay so that is highly recommended so for example if you made some errors on t3 so like today and you need you can roll back your backup on yesterday so you can use that one and you can de undelete you can delete uh, what you made mistake okay so it is highly recommend making backups of your database and once you did something wrong in your, in your database so there's no undo button okay uh, so we will also talk about three types of the modifying your data uh, so the first one is called insert so basically that means we can insert data into a table. Uh, another thing that you keep in mind that when we modify a table in the database, all the other rules, the constraints, and also the foreign keys, uh, the primary keys, so all the other rules will apply to those SQL modifying. So if, uh, if uh, the actions that you did when you, when you are trying to change the re records against any of those rules, constraints, like our foreign keys or primary keys, and that modification will fail. Okay, so you still need to follow those predefined rules in your database. Okay, and also data type, etc. Okay, so the first one is called insert. So the syntax is pretty simple. Um, so you need insert into, and you tell the table, okay, which table do you want to insert the data? And you have to tell all the columns that you want to, the value you need to insert. So uh, column one, column two, column three. So you can omit that column if that column has a default value, or if the, that column has value that can be automatically updated, okay? Or if that column can accept none values, okay? So if that column can be, we we'll have a default value or we we'll have a automatic value or can accept none values and you can omit that column. Otherwise, you have to include that column in this parentheses. Okay. And next, you have to tell what are the values you want insert into that column. And you should make sure that you in the same order. So the value one will go to the column one, value two will go to column two. And also if you have 10 columns, and you have tapped the 10 values for each single column. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see some example here. So let's see here we have this table. So here I have the uh, student table that has uh, student email, student name, and our student major. And that is the syntax, that is SQL code. So I say insert into, again, you have tell the table and what columns are you going to insert? Okay, so I want insert a value to the email, student name, and also major. And the values will be following the same order, so the, the email, the name, and also major. And they are also, if those are characters, so 
if they are characters, you have to give them the single quotation mark. If those are numbers, then you don't need a single quotation mark. And you insert, and the message will say, okay, how many records has been inserted? So here just one, and that was success. And if you query that table again, and you will see that modified table. Okay, you will see that modified table. Okay, uh, so now let's look at one example that in the uh, PG admin. Uh, so let's say, let me first uh, open my student table. Okay, so right now you can see here I have uh, three records. And if I go to my editor, so uh, let me close the other panels. Okay, so those two are the student. So let's remove one. Okay, so now let's say we want insert into my student table. So insert into, okay, insert into, and also the table name, student. Okay, again, so when you're trying to modify the data like insert, update, delete, make sure you double check all your SQL code. Okay, so make sure you double check. So if you have errors that in your SQL code and if unfortunately there's no logic errors also does not violate any constraints, etc., and the data will be saved into your database. And if you want to, so that will be a huge problem. Okay, so now you have to tell the, uh, what columns, so student email, um, student name and also major. Okay, so I have student email, student name, and also major. And again, you don't need to follow the same order. So, for example, here I put name major first and the student name second. Okay, um, that is totally possible. So, values. So, as long as here you are, you are typing the same order here. So, in the, um, in the values, I see this will be student5 at gmu.edu, also separate by comma. And the, so you don't need to follow the order that on your table, So, but you do have the same order that in your uh, in this parentheses and also in this value parentheses. So for example, the second column you typed here is major, and now you have typed the same value that will go to the major column. And the third one will be the name, okay? So then the third value will go through this major, the name column. All right. And say so that's, that's a table that before I added. And now if I run it, okay? Uh, I have an error, so that is because demo, okay? demo.student. Okay, you can see I inserted one and also the query was success. And now if you go to your student table and also if you rerun it, so now you can see you have new records here. Okay, and also as I said before, so all the constraints, all the rules that we have that uh, on the tables will still apply here. So for example, let's say what constraints we have on this student table. Uh, so for the student table, um, the only constraints I guess we have, we don't have any other rules, is that we have a primary key. So let's say properties. Uh, yeah, so student key must be primary, is a primary key. And also the others, we don't have any other constraints. Okay, we don't have unique constraints and we don't have uh, not non constraints. Okay. So, okay, so let's try to violate some constraints. So, first, let's say we want to insert into another student, which is S6, but here we are using the same primary key. Okay, because that is the only constraint we have. So, if we are using the same primary key, and let's see whether or not we can be success. And you may not see that. Actually, I just hit the wrong button. So, let's write one more. You can see that 
error duplicate values violate unique constraints okay because this one already exists and if you go back to your table if you write you can see that records was not inserted because um, remember that the uh, that is one feature of the relational database so uh, it will be all or nothing so in all the values must fit with the con with all the rules otherwise nothing will be inserted okay so here if we see we change that one to six but what we did is we just leave this one as an empty and let's say we want to see the name as s5 so say will that work Okay, uh, so it does not work because you see here you have three columns and but you just provided two values, so that does not work. And what if I just delete the major? So for example, I just want to insert a new column that will put as this email to student email and also this name to student name. So if you remember that we do have a name that with S5 and but we don't have that email and we don't update the student major see if that will be allowed and that is allowed why uh, because we do allow the unique uh, we do allow duplicate names because we didn't have that constraints and we do also allow the empty value the non values for the major so that's why this one is accepted okay Okay, so let's continue to see how we can modify the tables uh, update. So we can update exa existing tables. However, so when you choose to update your data, make sure you do have the where clause. Okay, if you don't have the where clause, all the rows will be updated. And again, there is no undo button in relational database. Okay, so make sure you do have the where clause. So the syntax is that which table do you want to update? And also you set the columns that you want to update and also you provide the new values. And make sure you do have the where conditions. So you want to see, okay, for what um, rows that you want to apply those update. Okay, so for example here, this is my original table. And what I want to do is that I want to update the student table, okay? I want to update, okay, I want to update these students that the major will become GS. So the original major was I, I want to set the major to GS, where the student email is this one. And you can see I updated one records, and that was success. And if I just um, uh, re-query that original table, I can see that the major of this student has been updated. Okay, uh, so let's look at that one in the PG admin so we can try it together. Okay, uh, so I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do, when you are watching those videos, so you are following me, that do those uh, records on your, do those exercises on your own data so that you will have a bad understanding of those SQL. Okay, <clears throat> so let's say we want to update demo student table okay so this is the student table right now we have so uh, we want to update the the major of this students so s5 okay see so set major equals single quotation mark gs okay so right now the student's major is i And where, so here I have a great, I have a question. So should I use student email or should I use student name? Okay, should I use student email or should I use student name? Okay, so if I use student email, see in this case I see s5.gme.edu and only this record will be updated. If I use student name, and both records will be updated. Okay, so that's the difference. Okay, 
So let's say student email equals s uh, five at gmu.edu. And now if I run it, I took success. I updated one record. And uh, if I go here, and now if I rerun this one, so now you can see the GS. Okay, so major has been updated to GS. Uh, so if I go back, if I say okay, instead of using emails, so if I say if, if I say if I want to say name, student name equals S five, and let's say we want to change the major back to I. Okay, so what will happen? Okay, so we have two students. The name is I uh, is S five, and the one is has GS major. One has none value. So now you can see two records have been updated. And now if we refresh this table, we can see both records have been updated. So their major all changed to I. Okay. So, so you have to decide, okay, so which one do you want to use when you're updating the records? So if you choose uh, the email and only this record has been updated, if you choose name, then both records has, have been updated. And if you don't have this where clause, okay, so don't try it on your side. Don't try this one. So I just want to show you. So if you don't use the where clause and that is very, very dangerous. So if you don't try that, don't try that. And you can see all the records has been updated. Okay, all students, they have the RA majors, now in RA majors, okay. So if you made this mistake in your database, you can imagine that if you have millions of records and you don't, you forgot the, the where clause and you don't have a backup, Okay, so so you, there's no way that you can recover the data. So if you check, there's no undo button. Okay, there's no undo button. Okay, so so again, so for the where clause, for the update, and also delete, never ever forget the where clause. Okay, so here I just made a huge mistake. Hope you you should not do that. Okay, so there's no way to change that one back. The only way is that you go to your database and if you see if you have backups that in the previous time stamp and you can recover from those previous backups. Okay, so the last one is that delete the table. So you can also delete tables. Again, as you can imagine that if you don't have the where clause, all the rows will be deleted and you cannot undo that. So unless the only way you can do it is you can you, you have to recover from your previous backups. And if you don't have backups, and I guess you will be fired, I guess. Okay, uh, so, so the syntax is that delete from table, and then you have say, okay, so the where condition. Uh, so here you can see the original table that I have this S5 students. And if I say, okay, I want delete from my demo students, where the name equals S5. So here you can see, because now I only have one record that have S5 as student name. So I just delete the one. And if I go to my table again, you can see that the record is gone. Okay, that record is gone. Okay, so let's try that one um, here in our um, page admin. So here I'm going to run the same de delete comments. Uh, however, here you can see I do have two records that I have as five. So in that case, if I run delete, both records will be uh, deleted. Okay, let's see. D -L -E -T, delete from demo dot student. Okay, and also it's nice that you can only have access to your own data. So that means you can only delete your records. You cannot delete the records from other from other schema because I didn't give you that uh, access. Where student name equals S five. Okay, so let's say delete. Now you can see two rows has been deleted because I do have two students. 
you can see I do have two student, two records that have the same name. And if I rerun it, refresh, okay, so now you can see it has been deleted. Okay, so this is how we can modify the data. So again, pay special attention to modifying the data because there is no undo button in SQL. You have to make backups and if you did something wrong, you can only go up, go to your previous backups. And do not forget the where clause for the delete function and also for the update function. Okay.